I don't think I've met a 21-year-old that cooks this way. Thank you, that means a lot. It's incredible. Pork belly, absolutely tender inside and crispy. So spot on, perfect. The dumpling, this is restaurant quality. This is something I would love to serve in my restaurant. The noodles are amazing. The sauce, not too creamy and over the top rich, but is subtle with flavor. It's a fine dish that I'd serve in a fine restaurant. My favorite is the braised smell because I find it very innovative and even I would not think of something like that. Thank you, chef. Delicious lemon eel, a little bit of heat. Took a massive risk here. Smelts three ways, and every way is good. Ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Chef Alvin grabs the top. Dramatically, it falls down. And then bam. Oh, yes! Yes! I love lobster. I cook it like once a week. I used to eat a lot of lobster when I lived in New Brunswick. That's something I'm familiar with, for sure. I'm thinking I'm gonna crush it. Lobster is one of my favorite ingredients. The one thing you have to be very worried about, though, is overcooking, because an overcooked lobster is inedible. Eric. Hello, Chef. What are you doing, poaching the lobster in butter? I'm cooking a lobster risotto. Anything in there in terms of aromatics? I'm gonna put most of the aromatics in my stock. So you're gonna make a quick stock? You think you'll have enough time? Because uh, that flavor of that lobster is key yes. to success. It better be good. Yes, sir. I'm getting a little worried. I still have to cook it for a while. It's got a ways to go. I'm shocked. Three risottos. I think Pino's in trouble. He's cooking risotto with a vegetable stock. You should fully utilize all the lobster, all the flavors. That's what Eric has done. He's got yeah. all the shells, the yes. innards from the head, which are your favorite part. Yeah. And I think he's gonna do quite well in it. One minute, one minute left. Come on, guys, push, push, push. I'm running out of time. Can get the knuckles out. I'm not sure what the judges are gonna say about this. Yeah, my result was done. I should be able to pull this off. Come on, play! <laughs> Dig deep, you can do this. Almost there. 10 seconds left. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, stop cooking. That was tough. Four of you decided to go Italian on your lobster today. I definitely want these judges to taste and know that I can cook more than Asian food. One of those dishes stood out. Come on. I really think this is one of my best dishes. I'm hoping they see that I took a risk. To get this advantage is huge. It was made by... Eric. Nothing against Eric, but I really wanted to be called up there. I use the body and the shells to make my stock, and I only use the tail, claw, and knuckle meat in my risotto. There's some carini mushrooms, Parmesan cheese, The rice, I think, has all the characteristics of an outstanding risotto. You used the shells and increased the flavors by various aromatics. You can taste a lobster in it. And that's the key with risotto. Very good. How does that look to you? Slightly overcooked, Chef. I would say slightly overcooked. I tried butter poaching it for the first time, Chef. Okay. It's a bad mistake. But I must say, the risotto is perfect and it's delicious. Very nice. Thank you, Chef. If they overcomplicate it, I think that could be a big problem for them. You gotta keep things pure and simple. With great classic Italian ingredients like this, it's often a case of less is more. Less is more. Super excited and nervous at the same time. I'm gonna go straight Italian today. Fresh pasta, tomato sauce, freshly chopped basil. Make a fresh pasta for an Italian. 
You know, there's always been a century debate about who invented the pasta, the Chinese or the Italians. Oh, that's you not know, much of a debate. You know, since you guys copy our pasta, <laughs> we just copy your handbags. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for, for me, it would just be pasta. Just pasta. Pasta, nice tomato sauce. Simple thing. All right, Eric, how you doing? Good, how are you, Chef? Today, I'm gonna try and go a little more simple. I don't want to be super chaotic in front of Joe. What's in the tomato sauce? Just the tomatoes? Just the summarize on the tomatoes? No, I'm gonna, I have the infused flavor from the sausage. Uh-huh. And you're gonna put the garlic. Is there a vampire convention happening? You're gonna saute the onion and all that pork fat? Yes. A little heavy, no? Everything I was doing for my sauce, he questioned. You're gonna put some wine in it? It's too late now. Never too late, my friend. I think Eric's gonna have a problem with keeping it simple, and I think that he's gonna go home. Eric, please bring your dish up. Pasta and tomato sauce could seem too simple and underwhelming, and it could definitely send me home. Tell me about the dish. It's homemade fettuccine, sausage, hand crushed tomato sauce, topped with basil. It's pretty simple, though. Did you want to stay simple, or were you trying to impress? Um, I usually overcomplicate things. Today, I thought I'd stick with clean flavors. It does kind of come together as a pasta dish. It has good flavor. Try it. What do you think? Say you were in my restaurant. What would you pay for that? $15. $15? $20. Are you overvaluing yourself? Uh, let's see what they say. I'm really happy this time you kept it simple. Yes, chef. But if you're gonna charge 20 bucks for that pasta, that pasta better be right on. And I mean, from the sauce, to the noodle. Texture, consistency, you hit it right on. I would say it's a very nice fish. Thank you. Baked Alaska, a majestic classic that when conquered is truly the mark of a master chef. What? I have no idea what it is. The base is a moist, airy layer of sponge cake, brushed with the essence of a syrup or liqueur. The center of the dessert is a dome of rich ice cream. Surrounding the sponge and ice cream is thick, pillowy meringue, browned to perfection. Eric looks frazzled. No, I have no clue who's going home. Could be any of us. Comes levels, all time low. Hate desserts, never had one of these before. I'm pretty good at culinary engineering. Uh, when it comes to constructing things, you pretty much have to slop a bunch of meringue on and just even it out, smooth it out, and take a spoon and start dolloping to get those nice peaks. Please bring your baked Alaskas up to the front to be tasted. Compared to the beginning, I definitely thought I was going home. Taking out my baked Alaska, I think I have a pretty good chance of winning this. I know inside this meringue, my ice cream is soft. Right now, I'm not hoping to be the best. I'm hoping somebody screwed up more than I did. Now the judges will taste each baked Alaska and decide which cooks stay and which cooks will leave the Master Chef Canada kitchen once and for all. Eric! Hello, Chef. I tell ya, cuts beautifully. Sponge, nice and fluffy. Meringue, nicely crisp. That cake, to me, is beautiful. You tell me you cannot make dessert, eh? That doesn't say it. You tend to underrate yourself. Sometimes you have to pat yourself on the back. Thanks, Chef. Eric. It is very good. Thank you, Chef. What are you making here, Eric? Oh, I'm making a fruit tart, and I'm gonna fill it with bananas and top it with some brulee strawberries. Are you using crunchy or smooth peanut butter? I'm using crunchy for the filling, and then I mix some smooth with the chocolate. Why did you decide to go sweet instead of savory? I thought it was more outside the box. Figured everybody would do pork tenderloin. A little bit risky? Yeah, I'm all about taking risks. The second person who made it into our top three 
chose to do a sweet dish. This was definitely the best looking we saw today. And the person who made this dessert is... Eric. My strategy is showing the judges my potential, my versatility, and my ambition. It's a banana peanut butter tart topped with strawberries and a chocolate peanut butter sauce. The taste blends very nicely together. It's just a touch dry. I would serve this with some ice cream or a sauce. Very nice. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. It's very well balanced. Nice, lightly golden brown crust and even thickness all the way around. The peanut butter, the chocolate, the strawberries cut the richness. Sometimes it's just hard to find something wrong with such a great dish. Thank you so much. I don't think the other home cooks know I can cook. Now the cat's out of the bag. They know I'm a top contender. I'm a threat to be reckoned with. So today I'm making a chocolate mousse Nanamo tart. I never liked doing desserts. I never liked baking, so I'm definitely stressing. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. Carrot, slow down. The judges told me to slow down, but I just think it's more efficient to sprint there. Like, I'm, I'm wasting time from walking. Close that blast chiller, Eric. Is someone burning something? <laughs> Oh my god, somebody's station is smoking. What the hell is burning? That's my station. Oh my god. It's a caramel. I'm definitely screwed. Oh, five minutes left. You have five minutes to put together a beautiful dessert for us, or it will be your last five minutes in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. He's actually burnt I something. think it's his caramel again. He's, burnt twice. Twice. He's almost in tears. One minute, final one minute, everything on the plate. Oh. They're running out of time. I don't see any playing. Come on. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I'm pretty happy about my dessert because, like, at the end, I just did a quick caramel. Really hot. I, I try to do a lot. How'd you do? Walk me through it. What is it? The top is supposed to represent like the custard of the Nanaimo bar. It's flavored the same as the vanilla and icy sugar. The inside's filled with uh, chocolate mousse. So you made caramel not once. Not twice, three times. Yeah, chef. Uh, I made a quick caramel at the end, just to candy my nuts. Did you have time to taste it? No, chef. I want you to tell me if you recovered from that mistake. Tastes pretty good. I think you're right. Mistakes aren't always a bad thing. Thank you, chef. So I always say how much I hate dessert. I totally thought of a dessert that didn't require baking. So it's an Asian play on a banana split. It's going to be red bean and green tea ice cream and a banana tempura. It's going to be the best banana tempura they've ever had. Eric now is doing two different ice creams. I wish he would just do one that was right. I'm concerned that he's taking on too much right now. You know, that may be his like he's here. This is for my mango snow. Eric's uh, really stretching himself, so I think that might impress the judges a bit more. I try to make mango snow, and it's not grinding up in the grinder. It's off. Eric, calm and cool. <laughs> Eric seems to be almost unraveling here. Eric, 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 Eric. No. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. No worries. I need to show these judges that I can improve from my mistakes and I learn from them. Hey! 
In order to make ice cream in such a short time frame, the home cooks are using liquid nitrogen. Here we go. The temperature of this clear fluid is so low that it instantly freezes the ice cream ingredients as soon as it comes in contact with them. If you don't incorporate it fast enough while you're pouring the nitrogen in, yeah. you're gonna end up with a rock. Wow, you're doing two at the same time? You're ambitious. Do you have it on high speed or medium speed? No, no, it needs to be on low or else it'll just like get destroyed. Depends how fast you add the nitrogen. Yeah, I'm adding it pretty slow. All right, good luck. Thank you, Chef. Oh, wow, look at that. Thank you. Nice. Nice mark. Eric, what else you gotta do? Deep fried my bananas and plate. I saw some chocolate on your uh, trolley there. You gonna use that? Yeah, there's no banana split without chocolate, so I'm just gonna grate some fresh chocolate over it. Let me give you some advice, yes, okay? Sir. Chill your plates. Okay. Chill your plates. Asian banana split, banana tempura, red bean and green tea ice cream, and fresh grated chocolate. Because there's no banana split without chocolate. Asian banana split. Hong Jiu Sin. You have taken all the comfort, the good of banana split, and you have put it into this dish. Red bean, that is comfort to Chinese because we love red beans. And green tea, that's universal. You have hit it spot on. You too have done an amazing job. I find the red bean one has a little sweetness to it that I expect with a red bean. The tempura batter, it is light and airy, so it really does not hide that banana flavor. I think it's a very innovative and high-reaching dish that you've done very successfully. Eric, I think the dish is very dynamic on many levels. And actually, the ice creams both taste incredible. They're very creamy. The one flaw, though, I wish there was some more fresh fruit on the plate to cut through the richness of the ice cream and the richness of the batter. But overall, I think it's an incredible dish. Thank you, Chef. Smelts. <laughs> These home cooks are squirming like little smelts. Smelt. Or is it schmelt? It's even got a dumb name. Schmelt. Who named that fish? Smelts. Thanks, man. Portuguese fish. So I'm pretty happy. I am absolutely ecstatic. I know what to do with smelts. I've never heard of it, never seen it, never tasted it, never cooked with it. I'm screwed. I'm going home. Marita and Brooke are safe from elimination. They don't have to create an incredible MasterChef-worthy dish with smelts. But you do. Today I'm making a fish soup with soba noodles topped with some braised smelt and some crispy smelt. I'm gonna try to fry it. I'm extremely worried. It smells putrid, it's slimy, it's gross. I really don't wanna work with it. Eric, come on up. What is this? Smelt broth with soba noodles topped with a braised smelt and deep fried smelt. My favorite is the braised smell because I find it very innovative, and even I would not think of something like that. Thank you, Chef. Delicious lemony, a little bit of heat. Took a massive risk here. Smelts three ways, and every way is good. Your final and toughest elimination challenge is a shell game. 
Under each of these cloches is an incredible ingredient that will be the cornerstone of the dishes that you will make in this challenge. Are you ready to see what's underneath these? Yes, chef. Razor clams. These fresh clams have a unique shape and are found on Canada's east and west coast. It's easy to overwhelm the delicate flavor. Dungeness crab. There's nothing quite like the sweet meat that comes from a west coast crustacean. Only about one quarter of the crab is meat, so every piece is precious. And be careful. Cook them too long, and they will become rubbery and inedible. As chef, I've never cooked with razor clams before. I have cooked crab many times. My strategy is one that's simple. Eric is a great cook. Take the freaking crab. Do not let Eric have it. That crab is so tricky. Chef, I pick the razor clam. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I may have just given Eric $100,000. Well, there it is. How do you feel? Oh, God. I have a perfect dish for it. Perfect dish. Eric. Hello, Chef. Tell me about your dish. What are you making? We're going to do a uh, green Thai curry. With a green Thai rice. curry? Do you think a curry might overpower the flavor of the crab? I think curry and crab go well together. It's not going to be super spicy curry. It's going to be sweeter and like herbaceous with the lemongrass, kefir lime leaves. I like citrus notes with uh, crab. Who do you think uh, might be going home today? I think Rita's a stronger cook, so I'd like her to go home. Good luck. Keep an eye on the clock. Eric, please bring your dish up. Tell me what flavors went into the sauce and the crab. Fresh cilantro, lemongrass, garlic, onion, jasmine rice cooked in coconut milk, and then a crab broth that I made. Nice little presentation, quite innovative. The only concern I have is the large lime wedges. They're large? I just think if you take a mouthful of sweet, delicate crab, you have this huge hit of sour lime. Not something I would have done. The flavors of that sauce are very good. There is a subtle heat, the richness of the coconut milk. It's all there, it's nicely balanced. However, that lime troubles me. Top three. It's an incredible achievement for everyone here. And you are only, what, 21 years old? Yes, Chef. It's incredible. Is this dish going to be incredible, though? I personally think it's the best dish I've put up so far. So the Thai dish, is it authentic Thai, or is it Eric Thai? Eric Thai. Tell me about the rice. Uh, it's just jasmine rice cooked in coconut milk. Delicious. Thank you, Chef. I don't think I've met a 21-year-old that cooks this way. Thank you. That means a lot. It's incredible. Since I didn't win the dim sum challenge, and my grandpa's here this time, I can't let him down, and I got to bang it out with these dumplings. These dumplings are from scratch, and they taste amazing. And this is like the first dish my grandpa taught me. Except I'm adding a bit more flavor, a bit more me in it. Eric, staying with very Asian influences, his braised pork, his soy flavorings. Although, uh, ketchup. Is that traditionally used in, in definitely, the Chinese yes. yes, it is. Really? Believe me, it is. Eric, I see your father up there. His eyes glued to this station. Have you done this pork before? Uh, no. You have not learned how to cook pork belly from your grandfather? Are you kidding? No, he doesn't use pork belly. What does he use then? Pork butt, pork shoulder. Like... Why didn't you use that? It's massive, chef. Pork belly is definitely more elevated, and I think it tastes better personally. Oh my! You gotta keep focused. Yes, chef. All right. Good luck. I can see the pork belly coming out. Ah, oh, buddy. That looks Eric. amazing, Eric. Oh yeah. It looks good. The color looks beautiful.
You had a chance to see these amazing dishes, but only Alvin, Michael, and I will be lucky enough to taste them. Let's go. I'm pretty confident in my flavors. This dish is like my grandpa on a plate. He taught me like this traditional Chinese barbecue pork and dumplings. All right, Eric, your turn, bring it up. I made a crispy pork belly with a vegetable dumpling and a wasabi mayo with a soy reduction. This is a very ambitious dish. To get a crispy pork belly done in an hour is not easy. Eric, first of all, you have put a lot on this plate. Pork belly, absolutely tender inside and crispy. So spot on, perfect. The dumpling, this is restaurant quality. This is something I would love to serve in my restaurant. Pork belly, it's not the easiest thing in the world to cook. And you've been able to maintain that moist, tender succulence that I love and look for in a really great pork belly. Thank you, Chef. It is delicious. The dumplings, I think you did a great job. You can see the vegetables, how they've been cut with such precision through it. The dish was amazing. So I'm making chassi tongwa, which is pretty much barbecue pork and soup noodles. Ooh. And then I'm gonna make a pork broth with some spinach. Hi, Rick. Hi, Chef. Now this is a typical Chinese kitchen. And then I see, you know, pressure cookers not use a lot of Chinese cuisine. So what's in the broth? My grandpa always does pork and spinach broth. Well, I never had pork and spinach broth, so that's a very unusual combination for Chinese broth. He always does it, and I love it. Make sure you have my chopsticks ready, okay? Thank you. One minute! The home cooks have just moments to spare in a mystery box inspired by their childhood photos. Finishing touches should be going on the plates, wiping down, and final checking. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, up! I'm really happy with how my dish turned out. I'm actually, for once, like, super proud and just super confident with my dish. The third dish was exactly what we have been waiting for from this home cook. It shows where they're from and what they have learned. And we hope it's the beginning of more great things from this person. Please step forward. Eric. This is absolutely the dish that I'm most proud of. It represents my background, shows my skill, and it, it honors my grandpa fantastically. Hey, Eric, what's the inspiration? This is a classic dish my grandpa always made for me, and he's mostly my inspiration. It's a cha siu tong mian, which is Chinese barbecue pork soup noodles. Grandpa taught you well. You did all this from scratch in one hour. Yeah. Hosek. It's the kind of broth that my mother would say would warm the cockles of your heart. And this you learned from your grandfather, you say? Yeah, barbecue pork recipe says. When you see your grandfather next, I'd like you to tell him that he should be very, very proud of his grandson. Thank you so much, Chef. Well done. Thank you, Chef. The cooking time for your entree starts now! One of my family's favorite dishes, but I'm gonna put an Asian spin on it today because I'm trying to keep it with an Asian theme. I'm gonna use a uh, katara and make egg noodles. Looks like he's just about to start working on his noodles. He is, to me, almost the pasta master. He loves working with noodles, and the fact that he's using a guitar, which is a special little device, an Italian device to make those noodles, shows that he's very confident and comfortable that he can make a really great noodle. I think I'm being the right amount of ambitious doing these techniques for my entree because it's all calculated, and I know I can execute it. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes remaining. You're now at the halfway mark. The cooking of the lobster has to be perfect. Lobster is a family favorite, and I definitely can't let them down because I feel like I disappointed them in the lobster challenge before. How you doing, Eric? What do you have in here? 
pot of herbs, uh, spices, uh, coriander, and grass. Your lobsters are chilling. How are they cooked? Are they medium rare right now? They're slightly under. Oh, look at that. How long did you cook these lobsters for? Uh, eight minutes, chef. Eight minutes? Yeah. Chef Claude thinks I overcooked my lobster. I just have to push through and execute this lobster dish. I can't go home unless I'm Canada's first master chef. Yeah! Can I have some? <laughs> Eric already cooked his lobster almost to the edge. Now, if he stir fries that lobster on top of the poaching, I'm concerned it might be overcooked. Marita is definitely playing it safe, doing what she knows really well, which might be a very smart move, but only time will tell. One minute! Your final minute! Come on, get him on the plate, plate him up, let's go, let's go, let's go! I'm happy to get a real walk and just cook some Asian food. I'm back in my element, stir frying these noodles. Lobster has to be perfect because I overcooked it last time. If I overcook it again, then what kind of redemption is that? Eric, please bring up your entree. It's uh, homemade egg noodles with uh, lobster sauce, aromatic spices, and then lime segments. Eric. You've learned how to cook lobster to a tea. The noodles are amazing. The sauce, not too creamy and over the top rich, but is subtle with flavor. It's a fine dish that I'd serve in a fine restaurant. Certainly one of mine. Thank you. It's impressive. Eric, by using the guitarra, you have the perfect, what we call the Shanghainese noodles. You know, you got that nice, smoky, burnt flavor. Here is when you're mixing East and the West together, and you do it right. Very, very smart. Thank you, Chef. If you look back at the cook that you were when you first entered this competition, and you compare that person, that skill level, to where you are now, it's night and day. Thank you so much, Chef. Whatever the outcome is today, you need to cook 